Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Sandra and today's video is going to be all about the best places to work for cybersecurity. I do you want to give kind of the overall high level of sectors of where cybersecurity professionals are the most respected, well paid, and needed for their jobs. And hopefully this can give you guys some idea of what companies or types of companies that you can apply to rather than just looking everywhere and, and casting a super wide net. You can specifically focus on these types of companies based on whatever your interests are. And these will be in no specific order, but the first one on this list is any government organization that specifically focuses on protecting data and privacy or houses secret or top secret data. So obviously when you think about cybersecurity, you also end up thinking about the government entities like the FBI, the CIA, any government organization that is somewhat related or working on projects related to the dark web. Government organizations are notorious for needing cybersecurity professionals specifically because the data that they're trying to protect is very, very important. Whether it's data about their citizens, any secret or top secret data around the military, the Navy, basically everything on that veteran side. And another thing is government contractors or defense contractors. So there's a lot of organizations out there that specifically partner directly with the government at some level, local, state, federal, and basically have some kind of contracted work that the government hires them out to do or they have some kind of project that is a few years long and they basically have external companies come in and do that work but it's still for a government related project and for a lot of those projects you may need secret or top secret clearance and these clearance levels are are definitely going to be a bit time consuming if that's what your goal is but I'm sure every country does something different with how they choose to hire the contractors that they're working with. But in the US, typically secret or top secret clearance are probably the main ones that government contractors or defense contractors are looking for and just government agencies in general. It is a very lengthy process for anyone who is interested. You can definitely look up the steps. Sometimes it can take a few months to up to a year. So it's a very long time consuming process. But what's nice about it is that there is a pretty decent pay bump if you get your clearance. But of course there are companies that aren't defense contractors that also need some kind of security clearance or is a nice to have if there are companies that work with the government and supply some kind of service or product. All right, the second one on this list is finance companies and fintech. So this one is probably a no-brainer if you are someone who is interested in cybersecurity. You probably have at least applied to a few finance companies just because they are protecting people's information specifically around their finances and their money. And the finances space is also a very highly regulated space. So if you're working for a big bank or an investment firm or basically any organization that has to do with someone's money, you're probably going to be highly regulated and you're going to need really good cybersecurity professionals and a decently large cybersecurity team to be able to protect all your data and check off all your boxes and make sure that your, your applications and the customers that are using your applications, your employees that have access to your data. And the number one thing that finance companies fear most is losing their clients' trust. Obviously, trust is everything. There are plenty of competitors out there. If you don't like one bank or one financial services company, you can go to another. And that is why so many financial companies put such a big emphasis on cybersecurity. I'm sure you guys have seen lots of news articles about banks getting hacked or, or nation states or hackers targeting banking customers and basically getting them to send money to some account pretending to be a employee of that bank. And also, I know I don't personally share the places I worked at, or at least I haven't shared too much about my previous role, but I was working for a financial company. So I do know firsthand how much these financial companies really care about their data, securing their data, securing their customers, their applications, everything. So if you're someone who is working in cybersecurity, you will very likely be in very good company when you're working in fintech because they're always trying to hire the best and the brightest out of cybersecurity. And one thing I always keep in mind is the fact that companies care and value the most the employees that make them the money. And obviously it's hard to argue with that because, because those employees are making the money and bring value to the company in a very direct way. 
but in cybersecurity, you're also bringing money into these companies in a direct way by saving the money. I believe the average cost for a cybersecurity attack or a breach is in the millions, let alone the actual reputational damage that could come when a financial services company has a data breach or has a cyber attack. So you likely will be getting paid pretty well and have very good job security and stability if you're working in cybersecurity for a fintech company. Okay, number three on this list is big tech. Obviously, if you're thinking about big tech, you're thinking about the Metas, the Googles, the Facebooks. Okay, well, Meta and Facebook have the same thing, but Fang and Manga, those abbreviations that you hear a lot, as well as the extension of all of those big tech companies. They also have very valuable information in terms of typically data around their customers. And this space is also becoming highly regulated just in terms of data privacy laws and privacy in general around, around what companies can do with the user's data, what rights a user gives up when they're using certain applications, as well as being able to access their own data and being able to choose to have it deleted or changed or whatever, um, depending on the region of the world that you live in. So obviously it's gonna look very different with Europe, the US, Asia, and wherever you are in the world. But I do think that big tech is a very good place to work as a cybersecurity professional because obviously you're working in a company where the main money makers in this case are the engineers. It's the people who write the code, create the applications, do all the technical things. And as someone who is in cybersecurity, sometimes if you're working with non-technical people, it may be hard for you to get your point across, especially to the business side, let's say, to help them understand why implementing certain security controls or, or certain processes is important. But when you're talking to engineers, it may be a bit easier to get your point across just because first of all, they are technical, they created the product, they are more likely to know the ins and outs of processes. So all these are really just give and takes of different areas and is what you prefer. Some people might be really good at talking to non-technical people about security aspects and different things that they need to do to secure their applications, but others might just prefer talking to engineers and just being in a space with a lot of technical know-how. Okay, number four on this list is one that maybe not a lot of people think about, and it is security consulting firms. So in many, many companies, whether or not they have a cybersecurity team or not, and this goes for small up to large companies, it doesn't matter what size, you likely will still be having some kind of third party or a consulting company who is coming in and helping you do something with your cybersecurity control. And a lot of times it may be required from a regulatory or compliance standpoint just to have someone else audit your security controls. But specifically what I'm talking about is consultants that can help you do pen testing assessments or help you set up your information security plans or policies and processes. Companies like Accenture who literally are just for consulting, for IT consulting, software consulting, cybersecurity consulting, there's lots of consultants out there and they're basically like employees of your company or they'll act like employees of your company and bring expertise that they have to help you solve a certain problem and typically it's for a certain amount of time and if you're working as a consultant for a security company they likely will have some area that you're very good at and focused in for example if you're a pen tester an ethical hacker then you may be working for a security consulting firm that kind of hires you out for a certain amount of time to different companies and you basically act like a contractor for that company and you'll do whatever work is expected of you based on your job description and what's really nice about these security consulting firms in general is that you can basically work with a lot of different clients and staying with the pen testing example, you could be testing multiple different applications for multiple different types of companies. And that can give you a, a very wide breadth look of what security looks like in many different organizations and companies. And if it means anything to anyone watching this video, one of my mentors who was on the ethical hacking team at my previous job, he actually had recommended me join some kind of security consulting firm just because you learn so much in one to two years. And those are really the companies that teach you hands-on everything that you need to know to get the job done especially if you're trying to get into ethical hacking or pen testing because let's face it that is their money maker they want employees who are good at hacking good at doing whatever cybersecurity thing that they need them to do but if you're working let's say for a marketing company 
they may need a cybersecurity professional, but they don't have the means or the resources to help you cultivate your career. They don't have the resources that are needed and that is not going to be on their list of priorities. There isn't going to be a budget allocated to train the cybersecurity professional. I mean, not saying that there may never be, but I'm just saying that's not their priority. But if you're working for a cybersecurity consulting firm, they want their cybersecurity consultants to be the best that they can be in the sector that they're in so that more companies want to hire your cybersecurity consulting firm and have you guys as their consultants and contractors. So they want the most highly skilled and they're willing to cultivate it, put in the resources, the time, the money to help you guys learn everything that you can. And not every company is going to be doing that if that's not their main money maker, or maybe they just don't have room in the budget to allocate for professional development or security development. Something to keep in mind if someone is considering, you know, what company to go to, I do think security consulting firms are a really good way to go if you want to learn very detailed work about a specific sector in cybersecurity that you want to go into. Okay, I think number five or number six. I think number five on this list is healthcare. So healthcare, I was kind of debating putting on here because I know because I know a lot of people don't really think about healthcare in terms of honestly the best paid for people who are not a doctor or you know someone actually in medicine. But I do think that healthcare is important to put on here because because they are also one of the most highly regulated sectors that need good cybersecurity professionals along with fintech. So I would think that the financial sector and healthcare are pretty up there with compliance and regulatory things. And of course, government contractors too, but that's kind of a given. So in terms of healthcare, you are now protecting the health data of a person, of an individual, and that is something that is very private, probably just as private as someone's financial information. And in that case, it should be just as well protected for someone's money and someone's health information. Many hospitals do have IT teams, but they're likely going to be smaller teams and there may only be a handful of those who are proficient with cybersecurity skills. I'm not too familiar with the healthcare sector, so I don't know if there are regulatory requirements that require you to have, let's say, a pen test done on your system where you host health data, or if there are external audits that are required to be completed on your database systems or wherever you're storing your data. But I would hope for healthcare providers and different hospitals, because there are so many smaller healthcare offices, a lot of the focus is probably going to be on bigger hospitals, bigger healthcare organizations that require cybersecurity professionals. This is definitely an area that might be interesting if you're someone who may have an interest in medicine or may have an interest in the healthcare field in general. But again, these are going to be very local jobs, specifically for hospitals that may be local to your area. So it's definitely not a huge range of options compared to finances, but it's definitely an option that I think is worth noting in this video. Okay, the last one on this list is one that is very interesting to me, and that is being able to work for yourself as a cybersecurity professional. So if you're someone who's ever been interested in being an entrepreneur and you're in cybersecurity, honestly, there's a good chance that there may be some point in your career that you may try some kind of personal cybersecurity consulting, maybe for small businesses, maybe for a nonprofit, or maybe you do it as volunteer work for local communities or or local stores and restaurants near you. I think it's a really good learning opportunity and experience to be able to help a smaller company or, or some standalone shop that is local to your area, create a cybersecurity plan, maybe teach them about encryption, help them secure their network, making sure that they're not using very old protocols, making sure their websites are secure. There's so many different things you could try to do and it's really just what you make of it in that case because it's what you wanna focus on. I know someone in my previous company who also had their own cybersecurity kind of IT consulting business and they did that as a side hobby for themselves as well as a source of extra income. So that's something I would want to do in the future if I ever decide to work for myself or want to create my own cybersecurity consulting firm. I do think it's really interesting and, and you're essentially making the world a more secure place. But instead of working for a company, you're working for yourself with more flexible hours, being able to choose the projects that you want to do, being able to take the projects down the route that you want to take them, 
and focusing on the things that are important to you while of course giving the best guidance that you can in terms of security for your clients so definitely an interesting option for anyone who is kind of looking for other ways of expanding your career that aren't just a nine to five job or or something that is more typical. All right, so that's it for this video. Let me know if you guys found it helpful and maybe anything that you'd like to add to this list. Feel free to share your experiences down below. I love hearing from you guys and I'm really excited about the community that we're building on this channel. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications. I post videos every Wednesdays and Sundays at 12 p.m. and hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.